can I do for you? What can you tell me about golems? Golems are powerful, magical beings. They are made of clay or stone, have unbelievable strength, and can work non-stop. Are they living beings or machines? They are tools for mages. They do heavy physical work for them. The mage inserts a piece of paper with commands written on it in its mouth, and the golem carries out these commands. Ah, where can I get a golem? Or do I have to build one myself? Golems are very rare and expensive, but their construction isn't difficult in principle. In principle? The body of a golem is a kind of statue of stone, clay, or other inorganic materials. In order to bring the lifeless statue to life, a spell written in magic ink must be placed in its mouth. And nobody knows this formula. That is not correct. I know the spell. But how? Ah, Master Alistair! He must have sensed that I'd need a golem to help me. The body should be easy enough to build, and you know the spell, so what's the problem? The spell must be written in magic ink. Some of the ingredients are very rare. Ah, Piffle, I'm good at finding rare things. What's the best way to go about building a golem's body? A golem needs a torso of stone, clay, loam or similar. It also needs strong arms in order to carry heavy weights. And a couple of strong legs to move around on. Correct. The head of a golem must be made of clay and needs a mouth in which command notes can be inserted. Hmm, that means I'll have to make the head myself. Unless I just happen to find a finished golem head lying around somewhere. What ingredients are needed for this magic ink? Does it have to be brewed like a magic potion? Like, stir three times to the left and then four quick turns to the right? I hope not. No. A simple mixing of the ingredients is sufficient. However, precise quantities are crucial. Okay. What are the ingredients? Exactly two centiliters of crocodile tears, exactly twelveteen drops of dragon sweat, and exactly one sea stone small ounces of soot. What in the world is twelveteen? And dragon sweat? It's kind of hard to make a dragon sweat. Correct. Dragon sweat is very rare. Eh, I'll think of something. Can you list the ingredients for me? No problem. You can see the list by looking at me in the inventory. What do you mean, looking at you in the inventory? You'll manage. I might have some more questions for you later. And I might answer. Hello, Bill. Wilma. I hear Mr. Shieldhand caught wind of your smuggling. Hmm, someone must have given him a tip. He's not exactly the sharpest tool in the box. Why are you telling me all this stuff? A bit about the customs, Mr. Shieldhand, the council leader? You're one of us. You live in the upper town. You're a professor at the magic school. Hey, tell me, you must have really bled the archmage on that one, right? I mean, as the only available qualified mage. You probably get your weight in gold every month as compensation. Well, I get an apple, and I don't really like to talk about it much. <laughs> I understand. In the end, the others want their piece of the cake too. So now you can just keep on smuggling your alcohol without worry? Thanks to you. It was a mistake depriving Shield Hand of his cut. One hand washes the other, and in the end, everyone's got more gold in their pockets. The system works. You're pretty good at numbers and measurements. I'd say. Can you tell me how much 12 teen is? 12 teen is a forgotten number between 12 and 13. In the past, people counted more precisely, so there were a few extra numbers. Thor and 12 teen, for example. But... 
I have to add exactly 12 teen drops of dragon sweat to a potion. Oh, exactly 12 teen. Well, that's something else completely. That's what mages always write if they don't really know themselves exactly how much of something they need. They don't want to admit it, and it sounds cleverer if they say exactly 12 teen rather than it doesn't really matter. But you should know that as a mage. Now I do. Do you sell crocodile tears? Can order them. Be here in three days. Ah, that's too late. Oh, the fine sir wants free overnight delivery, does he? Do you sell dragon sweat? Dragon sweat? That's very expensive. Uh, I was afraid of that. But I need it badly. I mean expensive like I'll give you half of my kingdom and my prettiest daughter. Even you can't afford that. Hmm, too bad. I have to be going, Bill. See you next time. See ya. The troll just downed tools and called it a day. I should bring that up at the next staff meeting. Ew, the bucket is filled with some kind of mucus. Half water, half troll spit, I bet. No wonder the floor isn't clean. Remy hinted that I should have a look around in there. Something about the headmaster isn't quite right, that's for sure. The door's bound to be locked. Hmm, wonder if I can crack it. <laughs> the door handles look like stupid ears. That was either a coincidence or a silly designer. Oi, I heard that. You can talk. And here. And who are you calling stupid? You can hear and speak. Certainly. Why? I, I mean, why must everything be alive? How could I hear the access code if I didn't have any ears? And how could I tell you the code is wrong if I didn't have a mouth, hmm? Ah, uh, you have a point. I teach at this school and I'd like to get into the staff room. What is the code? Hmm, I'm starting to get the feeling that someone's deliberately put in obstacles in my way. It's called life? No, I mean that quite literally, it's like there's someone out there, somewhere, who has nothing better to do than think up one problem after another for me to solve. There's no other explanation. I, I, I don't think I know the code. No entry without the code. Ah, uh, presumably the headmaster just forgot to tell me. No entry without the code. Ah, I have to get that code somehow. Ah, uh, I have to go. I have something to do down in the town. I don't care. I'm just a door. Hi, Timmy. What are you doing here? I want to know what's going on. All the rats have orders from my uncle except for me. I want to help too. I understand that you want to help and have a real soft spot for little heroes. But you're not the strongest and your health isn't best. The Archmage staying in power is much more important for the small and the weak than anyone else. We would be the first to suffer under the council leader if she won. You could be right there. I'm trying to build a golem and I have to get into the staff room somehow. I could find a way into the staff room. There are lots of secret tunnels and passages under the tan. One of them is sure to lead there. Hmm. About the staff room? Yes. I need to get in there. But... I need your help. Could you look through the notes on the headmaster's desk? He's a stickler for order and I'm sure he'll have the door code written down somewhere. Why do you need to get into the staff room? The headmaster was acting strange and was hiding something in a drawer. I want to know what he's up to. Perhaps it's a bomb. Maybe. We need to find out what exactly. But you're too small to open the drawer. That's why I need the code. 
got it. Tell me about the tunnels that run under the town. Some of the tunnels are old sewage pipes, but there are also lots of caves and old vaults down there. There are even some holes and crevices that rats don't dare crawl in. Some say there's a dark force. That sounds ominous. I've never seen anything myself, but I'm more worried about the zombies. They're spreading. Zombies in sea stone sewers? Yes, there are. But Uncle Remy says sooner or later an apprentice hero will go down into the sewage system and take on the zombies. When I first heard of you, they said you were very sick. I was often ill during the war and hungry. We never had enough to eat until you came and helped us. Of course. It seemed like the thing to do. Not for everyone. Some people treat us like vermin. Some people don't like it that Uncle Remy works for the Archmage and gets paid for it. But he doesn't even keep the gold for himself. He shares it between the whole family. And it's a big family. I spoke to your uncle today. He looks tired. He works too much. Ethel says that too. He doesn't eat enough and hardly sleeps anymore. He says, I can sleep when we've rebuilt the country. He shouldn't overdo it. He'll be no help if he collapses. That's why we have to help him. He wouldn't have to do everything on his own if you and me pitched in. OK, you try and get into the staff room, then we'll meet back here, OK? Be careful. I always am. Hopefully that all goes well. Remy would never forgive me if something happened to Timmy, and I'd never, ever forgive myself. Hello, Sloth. Ah, Wilbur. Greetings. About the whole bringing down Bill thing... Yes? I'm afraid it didn't quite work. Sorry. I wasn't exactly full of hope. And even if Bill did get his knuckles wrapped, someone else would have come and taken his place. It's the system that doesn't work. Broken! The merchants are all in cahoots and fix the prices among themselves. If you're a mage, Sloth, do you know how to build golems? I've never tried. You have? Tried long time to build golem. Just too stupid. That's completely untrue. That was just playing around. So, I want to build a golem and I know the right incantation. Can you help me build one? I... No. I don't want anything to do with it. Wilbur? Yes? What are you whispering about? I don't like whispering behind my back. Sloth always eavesdrop. Do you and Blout keep many secrets from each other? Not particularly. I just don't like it when Blout fiddles about behind my back. It usually ends in catastrophe. Maybe you're too hard on him. He was going to juggle with kitchen knives this afternoon. I noticed just in time. Would have worked. No, it wouldn't. And they are my fingers, too. Sloth tell Blout off. Sloth always annoyed. With good reason. The pub, all this work. And on top of all that, I have to play babysitter. I lost track of time with all that ranting, and now I've missed the bakery. All your fault, Blout. Blah. The bakery up by the guardhouse? I go there myself. Which bakery do you usually go to? I like the one up by the guardhouse myself. Oh, they have those wonderful chocolates. I treat myself to one or two every night. <laughs> you see, stuff got fat. First of all, that's not true. And secondly, it's flab born of frustration because I have to put up with you. See you, Zlof. So long. Hello, Blout. Willy Bear. Are you really sure you want to vote for Van Buren? Little woman with big hair knows what what has lots of gold and lots of success. And you believe that if she's elected, you'll get the same? 
Sure, promise. Fine. But I think the little guy is better off with Archmage Alistair. Me, not little. And when Blout sue rich and powerful, little people shouldn't take away his money. Psst, Blout, what did you want to tell me? I won't say. You're whispering again. If we talk now, does Loth hear us? Oh. Just stop whispering behind my back, all right. Okay, sorry. Want non-alcoholic drink as apology? Oh, no. You might have tricked me with alcohol once, but never again. So Blub got you plastered? Lof get exhausted from itchy bitchy symbol of alcohol. Sloth like little girl with pigtails. I have alcohol intolerance. Or perhaps an allergy. What did you want to tell me, Blout? No, Zloth eavesdropping. I say nothing while Zloth listening. Huh. I'm not going anywhere. Before I became a mage, I worked in a dwarven inn in the White Ridge Mountains. You have stupid boss too. I am not stupid. Blout always have to work much more than Zloth. That's because you're so clumsy. We do the same amount of work. I might even do a little bit more. In too much work. No free time. Bye, Blout. Bye. You're back. What did you find out? Lots of documents full of lists and numbers. Nothing suspicious. But I did find an entry title door with four numbers underneath. Four, sixty, nine, forty-one. I wrote them down for you. You did great. These numbers are sure to be the code for the door. Thanks for your help. Well, if you need my help again, you know where to find me. Would you like to come with me? Maybe I can use a little partner somewhere. Wow! Yes, please! Timmy, do you think you could find a way into the bakery through the sewers? Of course I can. And maybe you could uh, borrow a chocolate? No, but I could steal one. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to incite you into doing something illegal. It's not against the law for rats to steal food. It's expected of us. Really? Have you ever heard of a rat being thrown into jail for food theft? Ah, true. Off you go then. Hopefully it'll work. There's Timmy, he's inside. Hmm, looks like he can only carry one chocolate at a time. A red one. He understood me. He has the red wrapped chocolate and is heading up. What's he up to now? Wilbur? Ah, there you are. The chocolate. Catch! Now it's your turn. No need. Well, how did I do? Good job, Timmy. Hello, Sloth. Ah, Wilbur. 
Greetings. Look, I got you a chocolate. Ah, well, the thought was there, but those are the wrong ones. The red ones contain alcohol. Alcohol makes love tired. I'm afraid that's true. I only eat the blue ones without alcohol. Oh, well, I meant well. See you, love. So long. I think we could use another chocolate, a blue one this time. Okay. There he goes, up onto the roof. Catch. Just swap the blue and red wrappers. Done. Hello, Sloth. Ah, Wilbur. Greetings. Do you want another one of your favourite alcohol-free chocolates? Oh, of course. Very clever plan, Willy Bur. Hmm, that was a pretty hard thump. Perhaps we'd better call a doctor. No, Ogre Skull Unbashable. Okay, fine, if you say so. What did you want to tell me, Blout? I hope it was worth it. Blout has Golem. Or part of Golem. Your brother's Golem? No, other golem. Blout bought it. Why did you buy a golem? And why don't you want Sloth to know anything about it? Sloth always so much work, much stress, much row. Blout scared to fight more. Sloth leave him one day. Um, right. That's why Blout buy golem. Should help in inn. Sloth and Blout have holiday. I see. And since Sloth had some bad experiences building golems, you wanted to keep it secret until it's finished. <laughs> Where is the golem for the parts? Here. It's broken. Yes, I see that. Blout buy more parts, then shout at until Golem come alive. I don't think that will work. Yes, Zloth hear and complain. Blout should not play with magic fingers. Willibur must build Golem, then Blout stop making fun of Willibur's size. But you've never made fun of my size. Willibur so small, mice call him dwarf. Blout, not say again if we'll ever help. OK. Fine. How about this? I'll help you out and build the golem, but it's mine until the election and I can do what I want with it. I'll bring it back after the election and the golem can help you and Zloth here in the inn. Um, uh, OK. Ooh, oh. What happened? Zloth, sleepyhead. See you later, Blout. Fantastic! What have we here? 
Hmm, a torso and nothing else. Arms, legs and head are missing. Hmm, a few old notes have fallen out of it. Mow the lawn, wash the dishes, chop a basket full of firewood, then do nothing. Find the Holy Grail in the castle of Arg. Stop! By the gods, stop! Right this moment! These must be old commands that someone put in the golem's mouth. <laughs>